Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That is good. Mercy endure forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. To be a disciple of Jesus means forsaking all selfish, selfishness and personal ambitions. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What is a disciple? A, a disciplined follower, follower, a disciplined follower of the teacher and his teaching. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we know persons or people that when somebody teaching them, they copy the teacher mannerism and way you walk and uh, everything and dress, speech and any, everything, you know. But now you not only have to that's not important, the mannerism, to copy the mannerism of the teacher. It's to follow the teaching. Amen. And the life of the teacher. Come on. Amen. And that's why we are called to follow Jesus, to be imitate Jesus. Amen. As a disciple of him. To be like him. You know, in conduct and word and power, man and holiness. Hallelujah. And obedience. Because he was obedient to his father. Amen. Walk in obedience. He always said, I came to do the will of the Father. That's Jesus. Amen. That's we are as a disciple are to imitate him, follow him. Amen? Amen. A true disciple. Follow his teacher. Amen. Hallelujah. True disciples. It's a cause. Amen. What is the cause? Deny yourself. That's right. It is a cause. See, a true disciple of Jesus had no saying in his life. You have to do what the Master said. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Luke chapter 9. That's where we're going to start today. They are say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And Luke chapter 9, verse 23, the Lord Jesus was speaking. And he said, Then he said to them, Oh, to the multitude, the one listen to him. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have to desire to follow Jesus, you have to deny yourself. Amen. Okay? You see? Tell you. It's a price to pay. Amen. Deny yourself. And that was the battle is. That's what the battle is in the person. Deny self. Amen? Deny self. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Nigh himself. And take up his cross daily. Hallelujah. And follow me. You heard that? Amen. Take up his cross daily. Follow me. Where your cross is. You have to take it daily. And follow him. All your stuff. <laughs> Follow him. Yes. You see, I remember the Lord, what a vision the Lord came to me and he said, Follow me. You know, I'm not going to tell the, the whole vision. It was really dramatic, but I don't understand the full extent of that. Now I'm going to stay more. You see, when Jesus tells you, Follow me. You have to forsake everything. Amen. Okay. Now you belong to him. When you say yes, that was a desire. 
desire, that's why he said desire. If that's in your heart, follow me. Amen. Hallelujah. Follow me. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read verse 24. For whoever decided to save his life will be lost. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save that. Okay? But he said, you know, your life is everything that, that you think you're going to accomplish. You have accomplished. You have to forsake those, thing, those things and follow Jesus. I think everyone, before come to Jesus, if you haven't come to Jesus when you were a child, you came to Jesus, others like me and many. A lot of things that we have done and we want to do, right? <laughs> things that we are accomplishing, things that we want to accomplish. But when Jesus calls you and says, follow me, those things take the back seat. Amen. That happened to me. That happened to me. Everything that, that I was doing, they want to do was done for me. Everything. Because that's what he required from me. Because I want to be a disciple, call me and say, yes, Lord, I follow you. you know, everything. By that time, I was a soccer coach. Everything was boo. I got family to take care of. People call me crazy. People say, Lara, that was the nice word that maybe they say behind my back. You know, I find out they were talking about me because after year passed, they came and confessed to me. I thought, you know, I used to talk about you because this and that. Okay. You know, it is okay. It is worthy. Amen. It's all worthy to follow Jesus, to go after him. Amen. Hallelujah. It's worthy. It is worth it. It's worth it. Amen. I said it's worth it. Amen. And I said again it's worth it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The disciple of Jesus to follow him daily and deny himself daily. This <laughs> continues that. And it's not like, a, oh, you came to Jesus, and, and then you go to live your own life. And, and, no, 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 you have to follow him then. And people say, I came to Jesus, but I see that they're living their own life. They're, you have to follow him. You know, Paul called himself born servant of Christ. I mean, slave of Christ. You could. If you, if you consider a slave of something, you don't have nothing to say. <laughs> or someone. You know, and that's what Paul did. You see, the same Paul they said that everything they that was accomplished and that time was nothing. Until that time was nothing. Everything becomes worthless. Amen. Holy pedigree he comes come worthless. For the sake of Jesus. Worldless. Everything is worldless compared to Jesus. Everything. I want to follow me coaching career. That's what I that's what I thought. That's what I believe. <laughs> Soccer. Everything, that's what's me. I'm the only coach, a player, I, I watch, I study. So this is a case, follow me. And when he said, follow me, and I said, yes, every door in that, in that matter was closed. Even I want to come back, I couldn't. I couldn't continue pushing for that way and be disobedient. 
Because that's what many people do. Yeah. They ignore the calling of God. They ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to them. They do whatever they want, what is convenient to them. If they go after those things, we all the mind and all the hearts, but the Word of God tells us that we have to go after God, after this, with all our hearts and all our mind. Not after all the things. So have to be continuous with God. I mean, every day, you get out, you say, I'm going after you, Jesus. I follow with you, Jesus. You are my Lord. I'm your servant. And you decide. Whatever you, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Amen. That's why the believers start thinking, no, I want to do this, I want to do that. Why, why, why? Because what? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke 14, chapter 14. Say amen with you there. Amen. Luke 14, verse 25. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, the multitude, you know, remember, is always the multitude follow Jesus. Amen. But Jesus wasn't about the multitude, you know. Jesus was about the do the will of the Father, about the message, right? And we have to be the same. And about the multitude who follow us, about Amen. the message, about the obedience to Christ, about to fulfill God's call, God's will, Amen. expanding the kingdom of God, preaching the word of God. Amen? You see, because Jesus was about the multitude, he could have said, I can somewhere and away from the multitude, or just be entertained by the multitude. Like many now. Verse 26. Let's read it, verse 25. Says, now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, Let's pass to verse 26. If anyone, you see the multitude will listen to him. And many of those people, that multitude following different in different places where he went. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. I hear that. You see, when we're talking about hate, not like hate, like the hate that we know, he was talking, you have to be put me further than Always. He said, your, your own life. When you say about your life, your own life. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to deny everything. Because so I'm, uh, I want to be a daughter. Okay, yes, you can be a daughter. But Jesus first or not? Jesus has to be first. I you want to say, Jesus, will you degree? You want to glorify him? Because while I was a soccer coach, I always witness people. Okay. I always was witness about Jesus. Every opportunity. And not like I was just doing my job and for sake who I was. I left my career because the Lord said 
not because I was lazy, not because I want to live for other people. Because he called me. I don't know how to, to ask people for anything. I haven't learned that. I don't want to learn that either. And unlike many, they, they, they are, they are uh, hiding. They're doing this for pay. What they can get and not. Hallelujah. Let me repeat verse 26. Man, anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife, children, brothers, and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. What I mean is first. So you know, at the cost to be a disciple of Jesus, a true disciple. Yes. Cost you everything. Even friendships. Even cost cost you your profession. Cost your family. Not because you want to leave your family, but because they don't want you. <laughs> you see. Even Jesus, his brothers, his brother did not believe in him in the beginning. They mocked at him. They thought that he went crazy. That's what they called me. They used to call me crazy. Oh, Jesus, praise you, Lord. Yeah. For him. Yeah. That was the nicest thing they told me. Family members, friends, and non friends. <laughs> all this has worked. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 27. A word does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Okay? You cannot be a disciple of Jesus if you put your own conditions. Amen. How to follow him, how to serve him. That lies to the disciples. Amen. Okay. You're not, you're, you cannot put your own conditions. You're going to say, oh, Jesus, I will serve you like that, or this way. Like I said, people, I heard many people say, oh, the Lord told me to go to sell this place. But I say, no, I prefer to stay here, and I'm here, and I'm serving him. They think they're serving him because they do not religious stuff. You're disobedient, you don't went to the place he told you to do. You do your own thing. That's your own thing. Maybe a little religious, maybe a little like you serving Jesus. You do some scripture, you talk about it, you do some program. No, 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 you are disobedient. You're not true disciples. Because to be a disciple is a cost. you. It always calls us something that we cannot do in ourselves. Maybe we don't want to do it. Okay? Always take it off from the uh, comfort zone. That's when you really know that he's the one calling you. <laughs> I go to Colombia, study children, and the retiree can tell me in my old neighborhood that I knew the people I knew better, or oh, better places in, in, in Cali. No, to the retiro. <laughs> you see. Well, I could have said, yes, Lord, I'll go to Cali, but I'll go to this place, not that, that place. You know, you have people here that they knew that I went to Cali. You say, okay, go, go to this place, my neighborhood, my family, we, we support you. You say, no, the Lord say, el retiro. Even when we got to the retiro, we started missing a 
I shared with someone, you know, from the beginning. He told me, sitting in that church, <laughs> I told you, I repeat it. Like, don't forget why you're here. I didn't forget. I knew it, but I just was visiting that church. But in case, <laughs> right? Because you, you, his disciples say yes. You don't argue. You don't try to put there like, a, hey, what about this? No, you say yes. And amen. Amen. This might look different from what you know and what other people say. It's okay. It's okay. That's right. He gives you the grace with that. Yes. To endure it. Come on. With every chorus of grace. Remember our chorus of, of, of grace. Paul said, by the grace of God. By the grace, I'm doing this. By the grace, I'm an, I'm an apostle. By the grace, I'm a teacher. By, a gra by the grace, I'm a preacher. See, it's not about their own power, our own ability, like many men, they think, they think they're so clever and, and they good speaker and, and, you know, that's many stuff. You have to follow him. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, basically, Jesus, basically, Jesus was telling them, I'm going to cause you. <laughs> <laughs> to follow me, it's going to cause you. Are you ready to pay the price? And sometimes we don't know what the price is. Until we get, say, yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and then we see all oh, things. You say, ooh, that's what it is. You know, people get happy when the Lord said to them, I call you to do great things. They just heard the word great things. Or you have or you have a great call. People, ooh, great, great, great. But great call is not like a big thing and, a, and fancy thing. Sometimes it's just the, the responsibility of the things that God called you, the important for God, you see, not to man, to God. So you, you, your hands be with, with, with your imagination. Ah, I got a great call. I mean, a lot of people going to follow me. I'm going to have a lot of money. I'm going to be famous. And then that is. You're thinking as a man. <laughs> and your hands getting bigger and bigger. And, and those things are happening. What happened? They get frustrated. They start doubting God. And they, what they do, they make their own things, you know, to accomplish what they heard from God. Because the thing has not happened the way they think they're supposed to happen. They, they become follower of Christ, no. They become a disciple of Christ, no. They do their own thing. Going to, it's going to cost you. Your own life. And, and it's not talking about death right now. We're talking about your own life the way you knew it. <laughs> because everything is going to change. Everything changed for us. Yes. Everything. And we didn't know it's going to change that way. Everything changed. And it's worth it. I say it's worth it. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go and jump to verse 33 here in, in Luke 14, verse 33. Hallelujah. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my 
the sun. You see? <laughs> You're not ready to forsake all. You, you cannot be in the sun. You're not ready to leave behind all you, your whole life. Sometimes this, the place you always live, you're not ready for those things. You cannot be his disciple. Because one thing, they're not going to force you. That's right. You speak, and they want you to obey. But he's not going to force you. When he told me, follow me, that's it. <laughs> he didn't beg me, he didn't, you know, that's it. I be like every man does. He said, okay, Lord, I will do my thing and I serve you. No, it wasn't like that. Or so called. Why can't I do both? Everybody doing both, right? No, not for you. Not for you. You remember when Peter, the Lord was talking with Peter, and Peter said, what about that man? He said, that's not your, your business. I'm talking to you. Yeah. You want him to stay, he will stay. But I'm, talk, I'm telling you to follow me. I'm telling you, I'm speaking to you. You want to be my disciple? Okay. Follow me. Follow me. Total renunciation of personal interest and total commitment of Christ's purpose and mission. Total commitment to Him, Amen. to God, to the kingdom. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> Commitment. Total. Yes, like that, we, we could see that many, they call the same disciples of Jesus, they're not. According to Jesus, they're not. And many they said they are serving Christ, they should be themselves. Because a man come to me and say, you know, brother, the Lord told me to do this and doing this. You're not his servant. You're not his disciple. You're doing your own thing. Yeah. And I have many that call themselves ministry doing their own thing because I heard with their own mouth saying, the Lord told me to do this, I did. I'm doing this. The Lord told me to go there and no, I stay here. The Lord gave me a vision and a mission. No, but I got my own vision and mission. Because the, the Lord's mission is too heavy. Yes, it's going to be heavy because not you. You have to trust in Him. Amen. Yes, life is yours. <laughs> you see? I got to do my way. And it didn't work. What do you do? You quit. Right? Because that's what many do. Now, when it gets tough, you continue trusting in God. Come on. We could have quit like many. Don't tell. You don't say how many ministers I know they are ready. They quit. They stop doing. If they don't, they do something else and masquerade like they serve serving God. <laughs> like we read this man, they follow Christ at cost. They pay the price. Mm -hmm. And you think we're not going to pay the price? He don't tell us to go to the cross and die for the sin of, of somebody. No, he just any a specific thing for us to do. Are you ready to follow him? Hallelujah. Matthew 8. 
when the Lord is speaking to you and you believe that the God is speaking to you, you better pray. Amen. That's waiting for people's opinion or people that get an agreement with you. Ma, that's good. If you're never going to obey God, you're going to put people's opinion or agreement. Matthew 8, let's start in verse 18. Amen? And when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Then a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. You hear that? Yeah, you hear that? Maybe. Send me, Lord. Call me, Lord. I want to serve, Lord. You, Lord. Well, they are in mind what they want to do. You know what the Lord wanted them to do. And when the Lord says something else, they, what they have in mind, and they have, but this case has come. I remember when I went to this Lord St. Mons to Cali and Retiro, a man came to me and said, Oh, Pastor, the Lord told me to start a church here, but I said, No, because it's difficult here. It's, it's, there's no morning here. Thank God you obey God. He told me, Yes. Yeah. Then, some, God called someone before me, or maybe many of us. And no one wanted to pay the price. You see? That's the one that lose the reward. They lose it. Because every word is a thing God. Not here in this year, but it's in heaven. <laughs> Because everybody looking here, looking around, what they can get. They think the be successful for the things of God have all the nice things and, 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 and material things more. You know, it's fine to have nice things, but do you, if you thinking the serving God about that, you're wrong. That's you're right. dead wrong. Come on. You've been deceived. Yeah. And because you've been this, you start deceiving all to get to get those things. Mm -hmm. Then you think you're serving God, you're serving yourself. That's what the, the wrong doctrine comes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Teacher will follow you wherever you go. <laughs> wherever you go. Verse 20. And Jesus said to him, Remember this guy, as a guy, the, the was a leader in the community. He knows the word of God. He teach the word of God. He explained the word of God to people. He maybe he lived well. Okay. He wanted to follow Jesus. He saw Jesus, all the things of Jesus. I want to follow you wherever you go. Verse 20, look at that multitude. Oh my God, what is that for me too? Verse 20, and Jesus said to him, For say have homes, and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. You know what Jesus told him that? Because that guy lived well. He said, Are you ready? To let me have all those things that you have to follow me. Huh. Look, I don't have a house. Even this, I can have any house you want. But he said, you know, I, I don't have a house. You, you, you want to follow me like that? Are you ready to leave your nice bed, your nice house? <laughs> to follow me? Are you ready? Verse 21. Hallelujah. Then another disciple said to him, Lord, see, when, when he heard that, he was listening what Jesus was telling that guy. Lord, let me first go and bury my father. <laughs> That's excuse. Verse 22. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, follow me, and let the dead bury the own dead. You know, this man, 
were making skills. It wasn't like his father. Maybe he was, maybe he was wealthy if I was there to get the, the, the inheritance. Jesus, yeah, I want to follow you, Jesus. But you know, let me bury my father. And then get that money. <laughs> <laughs> get the inheritance. Then follow you. No, I not want to follow Jesus. After the inheritance become many, I said, oh, Oh, Lord, you give me that, we give to you the, to the kingdom. They get the thing they're waiting for and they don't give nothing. They even disappear to the, from the churches. Jesus knew that there was kids. That's what Jesus knew the heart of man. That's what Jesus told him. It wasn't Jesus being mean. He knows. You remember, Jesus said that he knew the hearts of man. Amen. He knows the thoughts so of men. He knew what it, this is about. <laughs> That's why he answered that way. Jesus wasn't being insensitive. Insensitive. Like, a, you know, I don't care about, about, about you paying. About. <laughs> no, you, got to, you, you, you make an excuse. You're going for that here to follow me. That's not you, huh? You're not going to do it. You see, Jesus knows everything. Jesus knows what we're thinking. That's Jesus right. knows our hearts. Come on. Like, like a friend of mine said to me all the time, you know, Jesus knew you have. That's why he saved you from many things. He knows that soon you, he called you, you will follow me. He said, maybe that was. Because he saved me for love, for, you know, danger. Saved me many, many times, time after time, when I was in the world. You know, Jesus knows the heart of every man. Jesus knows what is in the heart of men. That's Amen. That's why Jesus said, I don't need nobody to tell me anything about men because I know the heart of men. He knows the heart of that person. Yeah. Follow me and let the death bury the own dead. <laughs> like, like, what's the gun kind of excuse? When Jesus says, follow me, is there not one's excuses? That's right. No excuses. You see, he knows that everything we say is excuses. When he said, no, I cannot do this because this is excuses. Yeah. I cannot say you because I have wife and children. It's excuses. I have wife and children when he called me. Even I waited for a daughter. <laughs> I was waiting for my daughter to come out from the belly. You see, you think Jesus didn't knew? He knew. So when I went, when I see my daughter, okay, I see, I remember my call. How could I forget? How could I forget? Yeah, I see her. You know? How could I see her? I, I, I gonna, when things get started, I could say, no. I want to see if, Lord, this is too hard. No, 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 I want to remember all more. I don't care what you said. And you knew everything. They kind of come, you know, before all in front of us, good and bad. No excuses. Amen. No one can make excuses to follow Jesus. I don't know anything. That's not excuse. Remember Moshe said, I cannot speak. It wasn't an excuse. The Lord don't even listen to that speak. The Lord start talking about something else to Moses. And I'm the speaker. But that's an excuse. I have family to, to care. In Jeremiah, when he called Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, almost a, I'm a kid. I don't know how to talk. I don't know how to say anything. It wasn't an excuse. Remember, the Lord don't want excuses. You see, he called you, he prepared you. He knows everything. Hallelujah. John 12. 
And as we read here in New Testament when Jesus called the disciples, we read that they, 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 the Bible said that they left everything and followed him, right? When he called Peter, Peter left everything and followed the Lord. Everything. Everyone that he called, they left everything and followed him. Amen? Amen. John 12. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 26. Amen. Amen. I want you engaged in this. You read it. I'm not entertaining you. It's not one way it's lying. I want you to engage in this and listen what the Lord is saying to us. Amen. Amen. John 12, verse 26. If anyone says me, <laughs> Hallelujah. Let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serve me, him my father will honor. You see, we don't need to look for honor from man. Come on. Okay, you want to receive someone that have to be from God. Let's start. You see, when you said that the Lord está waiting for a, 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 a touch on your back and say, oh, great job, you're doing good. Oh, man, how anointing you are about what you are. No, 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 no. Don't you listen to those things. In the night, saying, come on. You serve with him. Amen. You serve with him. That's right. Okay. If you are serving with Jesus, you only follow him and serve him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Stop, stop, stop waiting for others to give you glory. I'm telling you how anointed you are, how great you are, how great thing you do. Don't wait for that. You said, he, I'm doing it because he called me. Amen. Okay. Like when they ask Jesus, why are you doing that? Why? Why? He said, because the Father sent me. That's it. I'm doing it because he's called me. Amen. Okay. I'm following him. And his servants. And his disciples. Are you his disciple? Amen. Or you want to become, you want to become his disciple. You know what he said to be a disciple. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord.